good morning good morning how you guys doing today so really quickly before i get ready for work because i just dropped off my husband and i'm just <laughs> i still need to wake up so um i want you to understand most of the time when um i'm just doing this video off the top so bear with me most of the time really dig deep inside of your heart okay and think about this just don't react off of what i'm about to say but most of the time when we turn to the new age or any time of any type of witchcraft or whatever you're looking into to heal yourself it's obviously because of what i just said to heal yourself it's because you feel broken inside it's feel you feel like you need a piece of yourself that needs to be healed if it, you feel like almost like like you need control of something correct like really think about it if you lost somebody if you're somebody that's being bullied um if you're fighting depression um if you have high stress you don't feel like you're in control we turn to something that we can physically grab like you know like something we can physically see because i have mentioned a lot of times it's very hard to serve a God that you can't see, right? But it's not about seeing, it's about the faith and feeling. Once you really open yourself up to Jesus and really allow him to enter your life, all of these things that you're searching for that's in this world, you realize you don't need it because he really does heal you. And it's not like your worldly problems are going to stop. It doesn't work that way. But through all the stress and all the, the battles that you're going through, you can feel the sense of peace within. You won't know what I'm talking about unless you really open yourself up to Jesus. Now, a lot of people say his name, but only few will understand what I'm talking about because there's one thing of saying it, oh, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, and then there's one thing of really serving Jesus from turning from your, your sins. Now, um, a few people that I talk to that um, do not believe in Jesus as a God, which I respect everyone's opinion. I'm not here to make you worship Jesus. That's something you need to open your heart to. Um, I'm only telling you truth and you either want to be open to it or you choose your own truth truth you know I, I can't I can't open your heart that's up to you so a lot of people say well what kind of religion is that if he just died for all of your sins so now you guys just have a free pass no it doesn't work that way at all just because Jesus died for our sins doesn't mean you're supposed to continue on your your sinful path you're supposed to turn from your ways it's almost like back in the day um, when, uh, like, the time of Moses and um, Adam and Eve and all of them, how they had an altar and they would bring sacrifices to God, like offerings, not sacrifices, but offerings to God. They used to do animals and all types of stuff. Well, we don't need to do that anymore. Jesus did that for us. But what we're supposed to do is bring ourselves to the altar even if it's an altar at your own home you build your little own area or just if it's you getting on your knees and and praising god the right way that's completely fine and you're bringing your sinful ways and leaving it there leaving it there for jesus to take okay and turn from it now, we're only human beings, so we're going to continue um, fighting these temptations and fighting these things that happen to us. But when you choose, because that's the beautiful thing about this world, even though we it's a tough world, we have choice. Okay, we have choice. And that's what's beautiful about it. You can choose to react off of anger, or you can choose to breathe through it and say, it's not worth stealing my happiness. One thing I always taught when I was teaching the New Age is about happiness, okay? And it wasn't the correct happiness because guess what? We we're always searching for it. Think about this. 
no matter how many Reiki sessions you had, no matter how many crystals you kept in your pocket, no matter how many psychics you went to, no how no, it doesn't matter how many spells you tried to cast, guess what? It, you might have been feeling good for that moment, but then you go right back into depression. The new age is like a hole. You just keep digging and digging and digging. You get to a certain spot and you're like, ah. And then all of a sudden you got to start digging and digging and digging and digging. And it's nonstop. You continue searching for this happiness. And you get in more of a dark space than you were when you first started looking for happiness. If that makes sense. You got to take a step back and realize you're not working with the Holy Spirit. Now... Another thing that's very, very dangerous is, especially when you're working with the New Age stuff, this is all witchcraft. You got black magic, you got white magic, okay? Now, say like if you're a person that does white magic and you're not even knowing it. You're like just using nature to manifest what you want or casting spells and doing herbs, like using herbs to to create what you want and manifest like however because there's so many different practices but say like you're doing your practices not to harm but to bring only good to yourself right you're still not using god you're using another entity behind that you're using your spirit guides you're using um these unholy angels you're using your spirit animal you're using all of these things and these aren't godly these are false lights and guess what None of it's for free. None of it. So when they give you these certain things, these sprinkles of little things that you want, there's going to be a sacrifice of you not knowing it, but there's something that they're going to take for it. It's not for free at all. And it's kind of scary if it's your happiness, if it's something in your family, if it's your financial thing, whatever it is, it's going to drain from something to give you something. It doesn't matter if it's white magic, black magic, or whatever. Now, I always preached about, even when I was in the New Age, about how astral projection um, is very dangerous. Even meditating is dangerous. If you're not meditating on the Word of God and just reading and, and, and praying that type of meditation and you're just trying to leave your body and just meditate on your chakras and stuff is very dangerous because um you have to look into it more and do your research and churches should be teaching about this but um i shared a video actually about a lady that was a former witch she was a witch way she knew obviously way more than i did because i didn't really practice witchcraft I was, which I didn't think I was practicing witchcraft. Let me correct that. I wasn't really going out um, looking to cast spells and things like that. I was doing card readings. And yes, I did little herb things here and there to manifest and do things like that. But I wasn't doing anything too deep. But it was still very dangerous. So, um, back to the meditating thing. Um, what happens is you get a, a cord that's connected to you when you especially astral project or when you leave your body to meet your spirit animal like shamanism and things like that it's very dangerous okay and um i learned from this lady that was teaching about it if your white cord was ever broken because it's like a cord that leaves your body so you can get back um back to your body if this cord is ever broken you go straight to hell. It don't matter if you're trying to go to your spirit animal or whatever. It's because you're doing something sinful. So when you leave in your body, you're sinning. So if that anything ever happened to this white cord that was broken, um, you're in a lot of trouble. But anyway, when you're going outside your body, you can end up meeting all of these things, but they're not holy. And they will try to attack you. And I also explained to you about um, how your body becomes a fluorescent light when you're actually your soul leaves your body. So these spirits and entities can see this and they're all trying to fight to get to that, that um, shell, that empty shell because your spirit's not inside of it. And, and that can end up having possessions and you can come back possessed. There's... A lot of scary things in that realm. So we shouldn't be messing with that. Christians or whoever you are. It's not meant for us. We need to leave that stuff alone. 
If you really want a spiritual, um, if you really want to feel something spiritual, I'm telling you, start opening yourself up to Jesus. Start reading the scriptures. Start having real faith. And you're going to see how he's going to flip your world and make you feel this. Like, And when I say really open yourself up, really open yourself up. Just don't say, I believe in Jesus. There's a difference. Even going to church. If you're going to church every Sunday and thinking that's going to save you. No. Going to church is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. You're praying with the people. You're doing all these wonderful things to pray with the people and all this kind of stuff. But that's not going to save you. It's you turning from your waves, those ways of sinning. Turning away from the anger. Of not reacting off it. Not hating on people. Whatever it is that you're doing and you feel it's not good, turn from it. Repent to Jesus. Talk to him about it. Ask him to take it away from you. Sometimes we need to go to somebody that can actually um, help us get rid of these spirits. And you have to actually, um, this lady bring up a really good point. I liked how she said it was almost like, um, like it's like a tree. Right? And we're always just looking at the, the leaves of the tree and not getting to the root cause of the problem. So maybe say like you were um here's a good point. Maybe you're always feeling depressed and sad and rejected. And then you have a, a child and your child's feeling that way. And you're just thinking, oh, this isn't my bloodline. Yes, it is. Because if you dig way back deep, maybe your mother wanted to have an abortion. Maybe she never wanted to have you or something like that. It starts in a wound sometimes too. So, And then maybe her mother didn't want to have her. And it could go generations back. So that's why whatever the problem is, you really got to dig down in the roots and do your investigation and say, hey, is this go deeper than what it really is? Like really dig deep of why your family keeps repeating. What if you're somebody that's um, always getting a heartbroken, right? You're always having heartbreak. And then you're like, what the heck, man? Well, let's look at my family tree and let's dig down deep in the roots. Is it always like that in your family all your siblings like that or are they jumping from marriage to marriage are they like you get where i'm going at so if you see a family problem that oh this happens to our whole family or it's just sometimes it's just something on the surface which it's just the leaves because of something we're choosing but most of the time it's really deep down in the roots and we have to dig deep and really figure out what the problem is. So when you're going to, um, I forgot the word, but when they're casting out these spirits, right? There's all these spirits connected, connected to the main root, right? So we have to figure out what that main evil root is to be able to really release these spirits. Because say like you get, um... If you like to cheat, you're you're very lustful over women and men, right? So you're looking down and um, you get cast out and you're going to church and you're praising, but the spirit keeps coming back. That's because you never main you never um went to the main root of it. What's really causing all these other things to make these other spirits be drawn back to you because you never had the real problem cast out so it's hard to explain this because everybody goes through a different situation or a different problem but if we actually dig deep and try to figure out our family history and what we really need Jesus to heal because sometimes we have family curses and all this kind of stuff and another thing is, like, you really want to stay away from um, any kind of witchcraft, witches, sorcery, any of that. Because, and dealing with other people that do that. Because, let me tell you, um, I didn't really dig too deep into it. Because I was just doing my own thing. And I didn't think I was doing too bad. Because I always prayed to Jesus and stuff. Even though I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't realize that. Because of the things I was doing. But, um... She was also explaining, and a few people that were really in the dark. She did white magic and black magic. And like I said, there's a few people that I was listening to that really, I was just like blown away. 
these witches actually actual project good and bad and they could go into your home and cast spells and they can um do black magic in your home without even physically being there it's really scary that that's why it's really important to pray and be close to god let me tell you a story really quickly she was talking about um I won't get too deep into it, but there was basically, um, because she did a lot of witchcraft, and then when they stopped going, because a lot of bad was happening to her home, a lot of, um, the family was being broken up, and a lot of stuff by allowing this woman into their life. This woman actually, um, uh, because she knew how to actual project too, because she was a witch herself, but then they started turning to Jesus. So there was this one point where she was like falling asleep but she started astral projecting and she was trying to stop it but she couldn't and she saw the 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 other witches that were trying to be in her home and cast spells on her and then these women she could hear them talking oh i got goosebumps she said she could hear them talking saying uh, i'm not sure what's going on we can't really see we can't really see what they're doing we can't really cast spells there's nothing but a white light over here She's like, we got to leave. We're not welcomed here. We got to go. That's because she was starting to pray to Jesus and really open herself up to her, um, to Jesus and leave these sinful ways. And Jesus uh, said to her, I allowed you to see this so you could see you have my protection from this. And that's how we protect ourselves and shield ourselves from really, really praying to God and worshiping him the right way. Okay, like not just saying his name, just because you say, oh, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, that does not bring you any protection. If you're still going out there, continuing your ways of sin, then you ain't going to get the protection. It's when you really get down and you're really, really trying to release these things. Now, like I'm saying, we're not perfect, but there's a difference from you saying, oh, Gotta forgive me, I'm gonna continue cheating on my husband. Oh gotta forgive me, I'm gonna just steal this. Oh God, you get what I'm saying. You have to turn from those ways. You, you have to. The attachments to it and their addictions, these addictions, because they're little demons sitting on you, this energy that's holding you down. If you really want to get the happiness, get to the root cause of the problem. If your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, if you guys love each other and you want to be with this person, but there's all this animosity and hate into the home, really dig deep into what their family history is and what needs to be healed. Both of you turn to Jesus and heal your relationship. Be a, be a couple of Jesus. And let me tell you, your marriage will be healed. It will be, okay. All the the or your relationship with your 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 loved one, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it will be healed. But you guys can't just be separated. Like, oh, they worship Jesus. I let them do all the worshiping, and I'm gonna continue living my life. It don't work that way. You come together as one, and you guys will be surrounded by this light of healing. You can't just say you believe in something, but you're not turning from your sinful ways. Like lusting over other men, lusting over other women. You have to look at that one that you love and fight for it. You really got to. It's going to be a spiritual battle. But if you really love this person, you guys can do it together and you can heal the brokenness in your home. And Jesus can do that. You got to turn to Jesus, open your whole heart to, the, to him and turn from the ways that are continue allowing you to sin. Now, you're going to continue having these thoughts and feelings for a while because, like I said, you're going to be in a spiritual battle. So, through prayer and through, um, like I said, I can't remember the word off the top, but through prayer and sometimes you have to go to people to pray over you to cast out the main root cause of these spirits to get released away from you, to break free from it, Okay. So I'm going to end it right here. Just please, like, if you have ears, hear. This is not for everybody. And I understand a lot of people are going to look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm not. 
I'm not. Really look into yourself and say all these things that you're doing, are you really happy? Or you still continue digging for happiness? All these things that are supposed to heal you, are you really healed? And you got to continue doing other things to try to heal you. No, it's just a digger hole you keep digging yourself into. Break away from that stuff. It's all a false light. It's all false. Turn your way to Jesus. And I promise you, he's going to heal you in a way you have never felt before. Just don't say his name. But really, open up the scriptures. Read his word. Open up your heart. And allow him to heal you and your family and the root of what's going on. God bless you guys. I pray for you all. I hope you all find the real light. God bless.